Good evening, and thank you for joining me for Mood, my senior organ recital. This recital fulfills the requirements of a Bachelor of Arts in Music degree as a cumulative presentation in the form of a public recital. Tonight we will be exploring the musical keys and their emotions, an important yet often overlooked element of music and composition. I believe it's safe to assume that the average person, musician or not, can identify the two basic emotions of music, happy and sad. When you hear a major key, you often think happy. And if you hear a minor key, you often think sad. But it actually goes much, much deeper than that. Let me paint you a picture. It's August of 1796. It's four years after the French Revolution War that has now led into the European War. Austrian troops are doing poorly against the French and Germans, and Austria fears invasion. Reflecting on the troubled mood of the times, Joseph Haydn composed Misa in Tempora Belli, a mass in wartime. This is a very popular mass for its use of timpani. However, many historians believe that it actually expresses an anti-war sentiment, even though that's not explicitly said in the text. Why might that be? During the time of the composition of the mass, the Austrian government had decreed that no Austrian should speak of peace until the enemy is driven back to its customary borders. What is found in the score is a very unsettled nature to the music, and interestingly enough, it's composed in the key of C major. This is what has led scholars to believe that it could possibly be of an anti-war sentiment. The key of C major is often characterized as pure, as innocent, almost childlike, that doesn't quite sound like a mass for more time. When Mozart or Beethoven or Schubert composed a key in A flat major, they were very aware that this was the key of the grave. We lose a part of the meaning of the music if we don't pay attention to the affect of the key selected. A German music theorist named Johann Matheson was the first to write about musical emotions way back in 1713. Interestingly enough, he was very good friends with George Friedrich Handel, but only after nearly killing him in a duel. The only reason that Handel survived was because of his extra large shirt buttons that turned aside Matheson's sword. In 1739, Matheson published Der Volkommen Kapellmeister. This offered musical examples for composers and musicians to use to arouse certain emotions in its listeners. Matheson's work was later rediscovered and translated by Rita Stebelin. She published her findings in a book called A History of Key Characteristics in the 18th and Early 19th Centuries, a book which can now be found at the Southwestern Adventist University Library. Although these characteristics are subjective, it's easy to imagine each key as being distinct because they sounded distinct, especially within unequal temperaments. When equal temperament became the standardized tuning in 1917, the aural quality of the keys became standardized, and so a lot of these characteristics are lost to us today. Because the musical affects of the keys is less obvious in our standardized tuning, I've decided to ask some of my music major friends for what their favorite key is and what they think the emotion of that key is. They have never seen the little handout you have in your pamphlet. Oh, um, probably say E minor. E minor? Yeah. Um, fun, 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 yeah. Fun? Yeah. Okay, another emotion? Um, Versatile. That's not emotion, but you know. Uh, um, she, mischievous. I like that one. Mischievous. mischievous. Yeah. Okay. D major. D major. Mm-hmm. It's really triumphant. I feel like in womanly. womanly. Yeah. <laughs> Powerful. Powerful. Um, if I write any music, I write it in D major. I just like the way that it sounds. Oh, E flat, of course. Always. Major, major, always. It's love. It's love. It's love and it's it's beauty and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Most of the music I write is in flat. Yeah. Um. I would say F major. Yeah. Probably peaceful. Yeah. I always um picture F major. Kind of more nature, like with the river and waterfalls and the train. My favorite key as a guitar player is gonna have to be G minor. Oof. 
move. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with just, just a slight anger slash intensity, you know, like, like there's a drive to it, you know? So wanting, wanting something, you know, being upset about something, losing something, you know, I feel like is a pretty good way of describing, at least to me, what G minor makes me feel. In your programs this evening, you will find a circle of fifths. I thought that a circle of fifths would be a fun way to visualize the musical affects and also a wonderful way to organize the repertoire for this evening's recital. I hope you all enjoy the music this evening and perhaps you will leave feeling in a G major mood. Speaking of which, let's start our recital in G major this evening. At just 34 years of age, Dubois was hired as Professor of Harmony at the Paris Conservatoire. He also took over from César Franck as choir master and became assistant organist at Basilica Sainte Clotilde in Paris. While being a significant figure in the field of teaching, Dubois was also a revered organist. His deux pièces nouvelles vary in character and were published in 1886, dedicated to César Franck, who we'll hear more about later. The third of the 12 pieces, Toccata in G Major, is considered a recital staple and I'm excited to present it to you tonight. G Major is considered the key of peacefulness and friendliness, poetic and lyrical. Listen for this especially in the middle section.
Mala Simon, or Silly Simon as it is also known, was composed in 1667 by Jan Peter Zon Zweling, a Dutch composer and organist. I was able to visit Zweling's grave while visiting the Oudekerk in Amsterdam in the summer of 2019. Interestingly, the graves are within the cathedrals. They're large slabs of rock that double as flooring and tombstones. I probably walked around for about an hour before I actually located his grave. His keyboard music includes toccatas, fantasias, and sets of variations based on secular tunes. Sveling was a fluent improviser, and Mala Simon is one of those sets of variations that's based on a secular tune. You may have noticed that D minor is often characterized as serious, with brooding worry and contemplating negativity. So, how can a piece titled Silly Simon reflect such a negative mood? To understand, we have to look at the origin of the piece. Mala Simon, as I said before, is a popular secular tune. And so I did some research and found the original text in Dutch. I'll just read one verse. Sylvia, my darling, my sweet angel, listen. Why are you fleeing? Just stop and listen to a word. Gordon, have a rest, for these lusts take one that hears the moans and complaints more than I do. I will love no one in the world more than you. Oh, shepherdess, do not be so shy. I give you my sheep. Oh, you are loose, boy. Good words are what I dread. A goddess, I do not respect love. Do not disdain me. Corden, dear son, think about it. Look at this poor shepherd. I don't want to go any further. Let your soul move so sweetly. I respect no good that is so part of me. It's easy for you to talk. Hush, be satisfied. I am speaking to you but not in that way. So Silly Simon is the tale of a young man pursuing a young lady and being rejected. Perhaps the key reflects the brooding worry of the young man or the negativity of rejection. Regardless, Spaling created a charming set of variations to commemorate that folk song.
Felix Mendelssohn was a skilled organist and composer. Felix Mendelssohn was a skilled organist and composer. His six organ sonatas are said to be required repertoire for all organists. Many feel that every organist should learn at least one of his six sonatas. Tonight, I present to you the third of the six sonatas. For those of you who attended my junior recital, Feminissimo, you might remember my presentation of Prelude in F Major, composed by Fanny Mendelssohn. She wrote that piece for her wedding because her brother, who had agreed to write the processional, injured himself and was unable to finish the piece in time. Well, the sonata we will hear this evening incorporates the processional piece which Felix had begun to compose for Fanny's wedding. A major is the perfect key for composing a wedding march, as it's usually considered a characteristic of joy and as a declaration of love. I like to think that Felix intentionally chose the key of A major, knowing that it was best suited for his sister's wedding.
senior organ recital is complete without a little bit of Bach. Well known for his preludes and fugues, I selected VWV 533 in E minor for this recital. This piece originates from a time when Bach was still in his early 20s. He had just received his first organist position, a position that basically fell into his lap after a brilliant performance as he was just testing an organ in a new space. It's believed that he played something similar to this prelude and fugue as he tested the ranges and dynamics of this organ. It was this intricate and complex playing style that got him the job. Unfortunately, it was also what eventually got him fired from the job. The church council insisted that his many variations and added notes confused the congregation. BWV 533 is also known as the Cathedral. It's unique in the sense that most of Bach's works include a slow section, usually the prelude, and then a faster section, usually the fugue. The name Cathedral comes from the fact that the prelude evokes a serene but earthbound feeling, and the fugue evokes some more inspiring and heavenly feelings. E minor has been said to be the key of womanly innocence, restless and yearning for a resolution to C major or E major. Listen closely to see which one Bach would have most likely chosen to end with.
prelude written in the year 1700 to a prelude fugue in variation written in 1868, we have a very unique opportunity to hear how this compositional style aged through the centuries. This next one we will hear was composed by Cesar Franck. You may remember him, he was the organist that Theodore Dubois dedicated his 12 organ pieces to shortly after taking his post at Basilica de San Clotilde. It was at this job in Santa Clotilde that Cesar Franck began to study more in depth the organ playing techniques. The reason being was that only 11 months after taking the post, the parish installed a new three manual cavaicol instrument. Cavaicol has the reputation of being the most distinguished organ builder in the 19th century. He was a pioneer in the art and science of organ building. In regards to the organ at San Clotilde, it has been said that it is unquestionably the constructor's masterpiece up to this time. Franck himself told the priest, If only you knew how much I love this instrument. It is so supple beneath my fingers and so obedient to all my thoughts. It was this organ that inspired Franck to compose a set of six pièces for organ, which included this prelude, fugue, and variation. The prelude, fugue, and variation are composed in B minor, which give a very lonely in Paris at midnight feeling. B minor is the key of patience, calmly waiting for fate, for destiny. It was very French of Franck to use B minor in the way that he does in this prelude, fugue, and variation.
Johann Kaspar Ferdinand Fischer was considered one of the finest composers of his day. Handel and Bach held him in considerable esteem, which is a high praise indeed. Bach's well-tempered clavier undoubtedly draws some inspiration from Fischer's Ariadne Musica, a collection of preludes and fugues. Unfortunately, most of Fischer's keyboard music has been lost. But thankfully, this chaconne in F major has survived the test of time. A chaconne is a type of musical composition that was very popular in the Baroque era. They are a series of variations based on a repeated harmonic variation. They often involve a repetitive bass line, which creates an outline for variation, decoration, figuration, and melodic invention. The key of F major has been characterized as furious and quick-tempered. That's not exactly how I would characterize the chaconne. F major has also been said to be a complete calmness, but ready to explode. Perhaps the registration that I've chosen and the variations will evoke this controlled calmness, ready to explode.
choice for this evening's recital is very unique. It was composed by Robert Russell, a musician and composer from Brisbane, Australia. I found this piece while searching through YouTube. I was looking for something new and exciting for my recital, and White Revenant was exactly what I was looking for. It has been a great pleasure of mine to work on this piece and to work with the composer. As he's an active and living composer, I was able to ask him some questions about the inspiration behind White Revenant. Here he is talking about his piece. Thank you so much for meeting me today. No, oh, that's it's my pleasure. Thank you for getting in touch with me in the first place. Yeah, I just wanted to know a little bit more about you and about this piece. So um, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got into composing? So I um, was born in Australia. I'd say my life really changed when I when I was introduced to a video game, actually, by a friend of mine, a video game called Final Fantasy VIII. The, the opening scene, so beautiful, it, it had the, it, it, it opens up with the, with the seaside and the waves rolling in, beautiful sound effects. And, and then this choir started to sing in Latin and it was absolutely magical. And then the, the camera s swept across the sea as it kind of panned out to the sky and it, it gave this, uh, it played this two minute orchestral um, choir introduction, this really epic, proper, really good music as it was going through the different themes of the characters and then and then it finished the the opening i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it now and then i think i need to go watch it <laughs> it was it was absolutely amazing and, and then you're born final fantasy 8 to start game and i was completely hooked and i thought this kind of music is is amazing and um i then wanted to be a video game composer i wanted to oh, write cool. music in that kind of style so more recently i've been um running a youtube channel where i I feel right. I, write, I write music that's similar to this video game style, this very literal, very grandiose, theatrical, often instrumental style. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I, I have now been writing for some games, which is a, a bit of a dream come true. So you're not you're not an organist. No, I wish I was. So how did you start incorporating organ music in your compositions? Because that's how I found you. Um, that's quite funny. Pipe organ tends to be in the video game world associated with evil characters of course it's, it's that, yes, it's that dracula's castle and um there are some lovely soundtracks that use pipe organ in that in that way in that very scary way and um i think because i'd had a, a, a slightly classical upbringing with my piano playing and, and with my interest in in some pipe organ pieces i i felt i could i could do justice to writing video game pipe organ music but in a classical way so you composed white revenant in 2019 yes that's right yes what was your inspiration behind it uh why did you like why did you compose this piece on my youtube channel i very much like to write instrumental music that i imagine would be in one of these video games can you tell me a little bit about the story behind white revenant sure well um on my YouTube channel, I always have an image that connects with uh, with a video. Um, so I found this image and I absolutely loved it. And um, what I saw was the was the the girl in the white dress um, walking up towards the mm -hmm. castle, holding a lantern. The story I, I had in mind was of a of was that there was a gentleman inside the castle who who plays the pipe organ, probably a ghost, maybe maybe not. I'm not sure, but he's he's been there for centuries, so probably have to be a ghost and um, okay. and, and he, he play he, he plays this this composition on the pipe organ inside mm -hmm. his own castle this deserted castle um, and for centuries uh, he hasn't seen his his lover his lover called Christabel one day he looks he looks outside the window and he can see her running or walking towards the castle holding this lantern and so the choir sings the lyrics from this man's perspective of of wondering could it really be her I haven't seen her in, in centuries I can't believe that she's finally come back to me but then as she walks closer and closer towards the castle she she starts to fade away almost as if she she's a ghost herself and she just can't come back in and then he 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 realizes or he, he suspects that maybe she is just a ghost maybe she wasn't real in the first place maybe i will be lonely forever and that's the mm -hmm. that's the kind of um <laughs> the, the 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 story um behind it. The story is fascinating. Um, can I ask one more one more deep question, perhaps? Um, was there a specific reason you chose to write in C minor? Or why why did you choose C minor? Um, 
that's 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 such an interesting question <laughs> because i i feel like i have a relationship with each of the keys right all 24 of them um yeah so as for why c minor specifically i i can't think exactly why it, it just would have I, I probably just would have played that first C minor chord and I, I just would have felt yes this is right I, I need I this feels like the right key for this story and for this piece yeah well that's very interesting um my recital is based on um musical emotions and I'm culminating the recital in C minor with White Revenant mm -hmm. um and the uh, one of the most common characteristics for C minor is innocently sad and lovesick. Yeah, that's so interesting that you're that you're that you're basing this upon different keys. Well, I really really appreciate your time and your composition. I'm very very excited to present it. Um, I hope that um, you enjoy listening to it. Well, thank you. Thank you so, you so much, much, Lindsay. Uh, all the best with the concert and the preparation. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm sure we'll chat again sometime in the future. We will. Awesome. This is obviously a recent composition, and it's unlikely the composer was thinking of the musical affects when he selected the key. But interestingly, the key that he chose was known to be innocently sad and lovesick. Pretty perfect for this piece, if you ask me.
we come full circle. Thank you to the choir and the music department for their contribution and support. Thank you to Dr. Devin Howard for the many years of wonderful instruction and his continued support as I prepared this recital. And I would like to say a very special thank you to Alyssa Brewer and the staff here at St. Vincent's for allowing me to have my recital this evening. And of course, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the music this evening and maybe you picked out a new favorite key. Please join me outside for a reception of cookies, cupcakes, and cake pops. I hope you have a wonderful evening.